So, Earthlings, I present you with a simple choice. Think carefully for you hold your very lives in your hands. Now choose. Either die in the vacuum of space, or... Tell me how good you thought my poem was. I liked it. Good. Oh yes, I thought some of the metaphysical imagery was particularly effective. Uh, um, interesting rhythmic devices too, uh, which seem to uh, to uh, counterpoint the uh, a metaphor of the um, uh, humanity of um, Vogonity. W- what? Vogonity. Oh, 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 Vogonity. Sorry. Uh, of the compassionate soul with the contrived through the medium of the verse structure to sublimate this transcend that uh, come to terms with the uh, fundamental dichotomies of another. And one is left with a profound and vivid insight into... Uh, into whatever it was that the poem was about. That the poem was about. Well done, Arthur. That was very good. So what you're saying is that I write poetry because underneath my mean, callous, heartless exterior, I really just want to be loved? Is that right? Uh, well, I mean, yes. Yes, don't we all deep down? No, well, you're completely wrong. I just write poetry to fill my mean, callous, heartless exterior into sharp relief. I'm going to throw you off for shit now. Anyway, God, take the prisoner to number three airlock. And throw them out. Okay, Captain. You can't throw us off in deep space. We're trying to write a book. Resistance is useless. I don't want to die now. I've still got a headache. And I don't want to go to heaven with a headache. I'll be cross and I won't enjoy it. Come on. You can't do this. Why not, you puny creature? Why not? Why not? Does there have to be a reason for everything? Why don't you just let us go on a mad impulse? Go on, live a little, surprise yourself. Counterpoint the surrealism of the underlining metaphor. Hmm. That's too good for them. No! Oh! Let me go, you brute! Don't you worry, I'll think of something. Resistance is useless! I woke up this morning and thought I'd have a... Okay. Nice, relaxed day! Alright. Do a bit of reading, brush the dog... I know, I know. It's just now... Four in the afternoon, and I'm already being thrown out yes. of an alien spaceship. I know. Five light years. Yes, yes, sir. From Arthur. the smoking remains of Earth. All right, just stop panicking. Who said anything about panicking? This is still a, just a cultural shock. Arthur, you're getting hysterical. Shut up. Resistance is useless. You can shut up as well. Resistance is useless. Oh, give it a rest. Do you really enjoy this sort of thing? Resistance is. What do you mean? I mean, does it give you a full satisfying life? Stomping around, shouting, throwing people out of spaceships? The hours are good. They'd have to be. But now that you've come to mention it, I suppose much of the actual minutes are pretty lousy. Uh, except some of the shouting I quite like. Resistance is useless! Yeah, sure, yes, you're good at that, I can tell. But if it's mostly lousy, why do you do it? What is it? The girls? The leather? The machismo? I... I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I think I just sort of do it, really. <laughs> there, Arthur, you think you've got problems. Yes, this guy's half throttling me still. Yeah, but try and understand his problem. Right, so what's the alternative? Well, stop doing it, of course. <laughs> hmm. Uh, well, doesn't sound that great to me. Well, wait a minute. That's just the start. There's more to it than that, you see. Uh, no. I, I think that's... If it's all the same to you, I'd better just get the boat shoved in the airlock and then go get on with some other bits of shouting I've got to do. I mean, come on. I mean, now look. Thanks for taking an interest. Bye now. Stop! Don't do it! No, listen, listen. There's a... There's a whole world you don't know anything about. I mean, here. How about this? da 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 dum da 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 dum I mean... Doesn't that stir anything in you? Bye! I'll mention what you said to my aunt. Potentially bright lad, I thought. We're trapped now, aren't we? Uh, yes, we're trapped. Well, didn't you think of anything? Oh, yes. Yes? But, unfortunately, it rather involved being on the other side of the airtight hatchway they've just sealed behind us. So, what happens next? 
The hatchway in front of us will open automatically in a moment and will shoot out into deep space and asphyxiate in about 30 seconds. So this is it. We're going to die. Yes, except... No, wait a minute. What's this switch? What? What? Where? No, it's only falling. We are going to die after all. You know, it's times like this, when I'm trapped in a Vogon airlock with a man from Beetlejuice and about to die in asphyxiation in deep space, that I really wish I'd listened to what my mother had told me when I was young. Why? What did she tell you? I don't know. I wasn't listening. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a truly remarkable book. The introduction starts like this. Space, it says, is big, really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the street to the chemist, but that's just peanuts to space. Listen. And so on. After a while, the style settles down a bit and it starts telling you things you actually need to know like the fact that the fabulously beautiful planet, Beth Selimin, is now so worried about the cumulative erosion caused by 10 million visiting tourists a year that any net imbalance between the amount you eat and the amount you excrete whilst on the planet is surgically removed from your body weight when you leave. So every time you go to the lavatory there, it's vitally important to get a receipt. In the entry in which it talks about dying of asphyxiation 30 seconds after being thrown out of a spaceship, it goes on to say that with what space being the size it is, the chances of being picked up by another craft within those seconds are 2 to the power of 267,709 to 1 against, which, by a staggering coincidence, was also the telephone number of an Islington flat where Arthur once went to a very good party and met a very nice girl whom he entirely failed to get off with. Though the planet Earth, the Islington flat and the telephone have all by now been demolished, it is comforting to reflect that they are, in some small way, commemorated by the fact that 29 seconds later, Ford and Arthur were, in fact, rescued. Infinity minus two seconds. Infinity minus four. Everybody, Improbability factor, high. There you are. I told you. I think of something. Oh, sure. Right. An air of mine. To find a passing spaceship and get rescued by it. Oh, come on. The chances against it were astronomical. Don't knock it. It worked. No. Where are we? Well, I hardly like to say this, but it looks like seafront at South End. God, I'm relieved to hear you say that. Why? Because I thought I must be going mad. Perhaps we weren't rescued after all. Perhaps we died. What's that meant to me? When I was young, I, I used to have this nightmare about dying. Uh, I used to lie awake and at nights, screaming, you know. All the school friends that went to heaven or, or hell, and, and then I went to South End. Perhaps we better ask them what's going on. How about that man over there? The one with the five heads crawling up the wall? Uh, yes. Uh, sir, excuse me. Uh, excuse me, uh, you know if this is South End? There's something very odd about it. You mean the way the sea stays steady as a rock and the builders keep washing up and down? Yes, I thought that was odd. Two to the power of 100,000 to one against and falling. What's that? Sounds like a measure of probability. Hey, that couldn't mean... No! What? What? I'm... Well, I'm not sure, but it means we definitely are on some kind of spaceship. South End seems to be mounting away. Stars are swirling. A dust bowl. Snow. My legs are drifting into the sunset. Hal, my left arm's come off too. How am I going to operate my digital watch now? Ford! You're turning into a penguin! Stop it! Two to the power of 75,000 to one, against and falling. Hey, who are you? Where are you? What's going on? And is there any way of stopping it? 
Please relax. You are perfectly safe. That's not the point. The point is that I'm now perfectly safe penguin and my colleague here is rapidly running out of limbs. It's all right. I've got them back now. Two to the power of 50,000 to one against and falling. Admittedly, they're longer than I usually like them to be, but, 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 uh... Isn't there anything you feel you ought to be telling us? Welcome to the Starship Heart of Gold. Please do not be alarmed by anything you see or hear around you. You are bound to feel some initial ill effects after you've been rescued from the certain death at the improbability level of 2 to the power of 276,709 to one against possibly much higher. We are now cruising at a level of 2 to the power of 25,000 to one against and falling and we will be restoring normality as soon as we are sure what is normal anyway. Thank you. Two to the power of 20,000, two against one, and falling. Arthur, this is fantastic. We've been picked up by a ship with a new infinite improbability drive. This is really incredible, Arthur. What's happening? Lord, there's an infinite number of monkeys outside who want to talk to us about the script of Hamlet they've worked out. The infinite improbability drive is a wonderful new method of crossing interstellar distances in a few seconds, without all that tedious mucking about in hyperspace. The principle of generating small amounts of finite probability by simply hooking the logic circuits of a Bambleweenie 57 submeson brain to an atomic vector plotter suspended in a strong Brownian motion producer, say a nice hot cup of tea, were of course well understood, and such generators were often used to break the ice at parties by making all the molecules in the hostess's undergarments simultaneously leap one foot to the left, in accordance with the theory of indeterminacy. Many respectable physicists said that they weren't going to stand for that sort of thing, partly because it was a debasement of science, but mostly because they didn't get invited to those sorts of parties. Another thing they couldn't stand was the perpetual failure they encountered in trying to construct a machine that could generate the infinite improbability field needed to flip a spaceship between the furthest stars. And in the end they grumpily announced that such a machine was virtually impossible. Then, one day, a student, who'd been left to sweep up the lab after a particularly unsuccessful party, found himself reasoning this way. If such a machine is a virtual impossibility, then it must logically be a finite improbability. So, all I have to do in order to make one is to work out exactly how improbable it is, then feed that figure into the infinite improbability generator, give it a fresh cup of really hot tea, and then turn it on. He did this and was rather startled to discover that he managed to create the long sought after infinite improbability generator out of thin air. It startled him even more when, just after he was awarded the Galactic Institute's prize for extreme cleverness, he got lynched by a rampaging mob of respectable physicists who had finally realised that the one thing they really couldn't stand was a smart ass. Five to one against and falling. Four to one against and falling. Three to one, two, one. Probability factor of one to one. We have normality. I repeat, we have normality. Anything you still can't cope with is therefore your own problem. Please relax, you will be sent for soon. Who are they, Trillian? Oh, just a couple of guys we picked up in open space. Sector ZZ9, Plur Z Alpha? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a very sweet thought, Trillian, but do you really think it's wise under the circumstances? I mean, here we are, on the run and everything. We've got the police of half the galaxy after us, and we stopped to pick up hitchhikers. Okay, so, ten out of ten for style, but minus several million for good thinking, okay? Zephod, they were floating in unprotected open space. You didn't really want them to die, did you? No, not as such, no, but... Anyway, I didn't pick them up, the ship did it all by itself. What? Whilst we were in improbability drive. Huh? That's incredible. No, just very, very improbable. Look, don't worry about the aliens. There's just a couple of guys. I'll just send the robot down to check on them. Hey, Marvin. I think you ought to know I'm feeling very depressed. God. Well, 
Here's something to occupy your minds with. It won't work. I have an exceptionally large mind. Marvin! Alright, what do you want me to do? Go down to the number two entry bay and bring the two aliens up here for surveillance. 